Okay, folks. Well, I told you several days after these storms have passed through, we still have one more day. That'll be four days of, I don't want to say nonstop rain, because right now it's not raining. Uh, it, it will be again in a couple hours. It's supposed to rain all night tonight, all day tomorrow. Uh, you see this ditch. It's not quite up to where it was before when we had that huge flood. But this is what's going to happen when we had three or four days of non-stop rain. Before, this would be washing out, you know, uh, because the pipes above them would have been dirt over there the way it was built up and here it just wouldn't have taken this but you can see here now the water running through these pipes it's not quite up to the top of the pipe though i'm sure at some point i can see foam on the wall there uh, about six inches above the pipe where it was this is what it looks like on this side now look at that look at that it's just pouring out there. Now what I might do to kind of prevent this from washing out anymore in this place where the water dumps, I might do what you all, uh, well not you all, but some of you suggested with the large rock or if I do it with the cement bags like I did the cement bag there and, and fill this in a little bit so that when it's beating down on that, it's not just churning up the dirt. Uh, but I have to imagine with the amount of water flowing out of here and how much it came up since yesterday that the creek is, is filling up, right? The creek is filling up. This doesn't have a place to go as easily as it should. You know, if you just had a drainage ditch draining off into somewhere, uh, I got to imagine that the creek is, is pretty full. Uh, we're going to go over there and check it out. But uh, that's what it's looking like. I guess the most important thing of this, all of this, is that the wall still standing after this constant pressure of water and the water building up on the wall. Let's walk over to the creek and see what it looks like. I'm gonna take this hoe with me just in case I encounter some wildlife over there. You never, never know. Okay, yeah, here's the creek. It's definitely filling up. You know, everything is flood stage around here the amount of rain we've had lately let's go down here to see what the ditch looks like okay yeah here it is i told you so the creek is as high as the ditch level so the ditch you see how fast it's pouring out up there at that bridge look at how slowly it's trickling into this creek there's no place for it to go I mean, it just has to take on what it can take on. You can see right there, look at that, the way the, the mud is churning up. This water out of the ditch is just barely flowing into that creek. So the creek will get higher, you know, when we have a, a major flood here, the creek will get higher and this will come to almost a complete stop. Yeah, but you can see that this is just a fraction of the speed of the water that's pouring out up there. I mean, it should just be coming out like a white water rapid, but it can't. So uh, that's why it looks the way it looks up there at the bridge. That's why it's just kind of churning around because it's, it's sort of backwashing into itself. We'll walk back up there and take a look at the uh, area that I dug down and put the rock in for drainage. We can see here you got right there and right here where the water came down from the higher parts you can see where it's dark and how it's washed out right here not washed out but where the water flo uh, flowed traveled and it even covered up some of the rock right here you know what I mean all of this was rock down here and it looks like though it kind of did what we hoped it would do. And instead of washing down towards the bridge and washing it out, it flowed down through here. So this worked. I, I need to save up and, and get another load of rock. But um, 
this was a temporary solution right here. I'm gonna have to come up with something more permanent. And I wanna do the same thing here. Look at how right here, a little small stream of it flowed down through here and, uh, and did that and it washed over there. And I guess maybe eventually into the ditch or it just kind of kept going over here. And that's why I think it'd be important for me to put a ditch, about a two foot ditch where that tree is down going to this ditch just to give it a little place to wash out. Now, the one trick to that is I cannot make this ditch so deep that this ditch would backwash into it, right? So it has to be kind of a shallow channel, shallow ditch that leads over here. And if we look at the way or where the tree is at, it will come out about right here. But that's probably what I'm gonna need to do and that'll definitely give the water a place instead of just continually washing out over here. Uh, that'll give me a better place for it to, or a place for it to run. But this is what it's looking like, folks. Um, I gotta believe it's gonna be like this for a couple days. It's, it's gonna be like this for at least two or three more days. This ditch, there's a pond, a big, big pond, about a mile up the road. It, the overflow of it comes into this ditch and you know I don't even know where else uh, the water comes from uh, it's hard to map it out on on uh, Google Earth but you know I have a lot of water dumping into me through this ditch that comes through here but you can see right here even with the creek being full like it was the last time this water does have a place to go it is you know it is running through here and you can see on the wall the water came up to about right here last night and you know the wall still stands the wall doesn't look any different to me you know it still looks just the same i still have to cement these blocks down all together i'll probably just put a nice little coat of cement on these i'm gonna mount the tree vise i guess is what i'll call it to that pine tree right over there. And we're gonna break out the mortise and tenon tool. Before I do that, I'm gonna take the blade uh, to my, on my backhoe and I'm gonna level this all out right here. I'm gonna get this all level. Might even get the excavator over here, I don't know. Uh, I think I can do it with the, I think I can do it with the backhoe. But that's what I'm gonna do and kind of prep this area for a little bit of fence and see if i can't get some uh see it rained it rained this much since i was here yesterday uh, i guess that's not a terrible amount of rain but temperature is good out here today though it's in the 60s and uh, feels pretty good uh, the next thing i need to do also is i need to take this trailer and i need to move it out of my way I'm gonna, let's leave this hoe over here, but I'm gonna take this, uh, this trailer, move it, go get my tractor, smooth this out a little bit on both sides, see if we can't uh, at least get started on the fence today and see what it's gonna look like.
Okay, folks, uh, I'm gonna try this first time ever. I've never done anything like this before. Of course, I say that almost every project I do. I've never done almost anything like this before, but uh, what I'm gonna do is, and this is, this is a very time consuming process, right? I got a little tree vise. I kind of got it sort of rigged in the tree because I don't have a table out here that I can mount it to. So I thought maybe that's the next best thing. Um, but I have a draw knife, very inexpensive draw knife off Amazon. And you know, I'm gonna take the draw knife, debark it, and then I'm gonna take my mortise and tenon tool and try to make fence out of this. I told you, you know, it's such a waste to uh, have all of these trees that I'm cutting down and I'm not doing anything with them but burning them. And uh, I'm just trying to make it easier on myself right here with the, uh, with the draw knife by taking out the, uh, the notches a little bit. But, um, but anyway, we're gonna see how this works, if I can even do it, right? If it's even possible to do, uh, you know, with, with what I have here, this setup. But uh, anyway, I think I'm gonna go get my chainsaw and I'm gonna nip off this end. I'm gonna measure, see, uh, see exactly how long all of this is, and then, uh, and get them all equal length. And then we'll go from there. Okay, she looks pretty good. Um, for the most part, that's all the bark off of it. Got a little spot here, a little spot there. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Uh, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my mortise tool out and I'm gonna try to, you know, put the ends on it. And let's see how that works out for me. Boy, that's a, that's a tough job though, you know, taking this draw knife. Never done that before. Uh, but you imagine uh, many years ago, and we're even skipping forward here because I'm going to be using a, a drill to, you know, put the mortise on there. But imagine years ago uh, when they had to do all of this by hand, just like this. Boy, it took a real man or a woman to, uh, to handle something like that back then. You know, we're, we're so spoiled nowadays with all of our machinery and tools and computers, electronics, so forth. Uh, you know, we, we don't appreciate the hard work that a, a lot of the people that built not just this country I live in, but the world, you know, what they had to go through in order to get us to where we are right now. And boy, I'd say it was a lot of blood, sweat, tears, hard work that they put in to, uh, you know, provide this world for us that we now live in. Just gives you a small glimpse uh, into what they had to do. Now, this is nice and secure. Let me get my mortise tool. 
attached to the drill. Okay, that's what it looks like folks, look at that. You know, now you have an idea of what I was talking about. This piece right here, okay, we'll, we'll get the post and we'll drill into the post. And that's the same size as this right here, you can see. Now this tool, that doesn't have the blades attached to it yet, but what it will do is it will bore into the post. I'll have a little piece here that's this size. It'll, it'll slide up into this hole and it will bore so that this mortise is not the only thing holding the weight. It will hide it and it will make this fence just slide in smooth to the post. And so we're gonna be doing that too, but that's, um, that's a key component to it right here. Uh, yeah, well, you have to have this tool just to slide it in there, but you really need to get yourself one of these bits, um, you know, a countersink, to be able to hide that mortise and add stability to your post. So let me take her down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, I think my camera died on me. I really hate that because I wanted to document some of this stuff. And uh, I, I don't know what I got, what I didn't get. Um, this piece right here, cut in the cone shape to hide your mortise a little bit. Okay, that was that. Um, mortise and tenon right here, you got your you can probably get this off of Amazon. Uh, it comes from Lumberjack. They make a bunch of tools. They actually made this right here and this vise. And uh, you can get all of that from their site. Um, so this did that. Uh, this, of course, cut the hole into here. And then the big cone bit shaved this out. And what it looks like is this. So if we stick it in here, like so, uh-huh, something like that, all right? It's not gonna stay, it ain't gonna be perfect or whatever until we can get it in the ground. Hopefully that'll stay until I can walk over here and uh, give you a shot of it. But imagine another post down there in the ground, you know? And uh, it's pretty sturdy if it just stays in there by itself. It's pretty sturdy, but that cone piece gives it more stability so it's not just the uh, mortise holding it in there. Um, you know, it's, uh, boy, that's nice and firm in there. But what I'll have to do is, when I start another fire, or maybe I just make one for this reason, I, you know, people are telling me different ways to treat this. Uh, the most, the cheapest way so far is to take some diesel fuel and a brush and brush it all down. Uh, that could be one thing, but this part's going to be in the ground. When I start another fire, I'll set this part in the ground right here in the hot uh, coals and, um, you know, brush some coals over it and let it sit in there for a little bit and kind of old school fire treat it is how I'll do this part that's going to be in the ground. Uh, this is six feet long. This is a long-term project. This is not something that I can do right now because I simply don't have enough trees to do it with, you know? I have about another dozen of these, but I probably only have one more of these. Uh, you need a tree like this right here to make these, okay? And I just, I haven't 
cut down enough of those. I burned off so many initially when I came out here. Look at this mosquito right here. Look at that mosquito right there. Doggone it. But uh, anyway, over time, accumulate these. We'll make a nice neat pile somewhere. I may even make a rack out of two by fours and cinder blocks to put them on to get them off the ground. And I was really pleased with this. Um, I'm sure there's a more, an easier way, you know, maybe an attachment for a drill motor, an attachment for uh, your, your grinder or something like that. But, uh, but this was pretty cool, you know, gave you a glimpse as to how they used to do it years ago, um, way back when, I guess. And they still use these, people, excuse me, people still use these. But, um, but I just wanted to see what it was like to debark using this little tool and it is so sharp. I mean, after these two things, I could probably do, you know, another 40 or 50 of these uh, before I had to sharpen it. It's just so sharp. You can see how I can just shave right down into it with, with no pressure on it. But, uh, but this lumberjack tools piece here, that came from lumberjack tools. Uh, all three of these pieces right here, this, this and this, they all came from lumberjack tools. Uh, something that I got a long time ago and I kind of held on to it and pieced it all together. One piece here, one piece there. And I was so excited to get out here and try it out. I mean, it ain't easy, right? It's hard work, but, um, but it's pretty cool, pretty cool way of doing it. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to look nice. It's going to be a nice little decorative piece when we get it uh, up and going. But uh, the rip wrap, let's walk over here and talk about this real quick. So the gentleman that I buy this dirt from, you've seen him before, um, super nice guy. But I buy all my rock crusher run dirt from him. His prices can't be matched by anyone around here. If I call any other place for this rock, they're gonna tell me 650 to 750 a load, right? He does it for 500 a load. So I know his prices are really good. And I called him earlier and he said, man, that rip wrap, that big rock, that's a thousand dollars a load. <laughs> And it's a lot, it's a big load, you know, I mean, 21 tons of that big stuff, that's a big load. But uh, he, he said it's a thousand dollars load. I, I can't afford that, okay? So uh, these are a couple pieces of cement, the hardened cement from the bags. And what I think I might do is these old bags of cement, I can go buy a pallet of that, all right? And look at this. This is like what you're talking about. This is like the rip wrap. Okay, same kind of thing. And uh, this is just gonna fall down into the middle right here. It's not gonna stick. Yeah, but that's okay. Because what I need to do with the big rock like that is I need to line the bottom where it's just pouring in here so it doesn't keep digging the hole out deeper and deeper and deeper. Because I think that's part of the reason it's wanting to swirl around right here. Uh, well, that and it doesn't have a whole lot of place to go with the creek being full. But I can take big hunks of that, break it up with my sledgehammer, hunks of that, and line up right here just like that big rip wrap or the, you know, number one, the big rock that you're talking about all over there, all over here. This side really won't need it quite as much. Uh, it's going to need a little bit right here and a little bit right there. But for the most part, this side is, um, it won't need too much. But anyway, that's my alternative. I could do that for $100 versus $1,000. I'm all about saving money because, uh, you know, there's so many things to be done out here. It's just, it's overwhelming. And, um, but that's, that's probably the route I'll go. I actually, while I was back here with the excavator pushing this stuff out, I threw those two concrete bags in there to kind of hold in and I'll pile some more stuff on top of that. Same thing here, but... Uh, when I came back here a little while ago, a fish jumped from right here to inside the pipe and got washed back out. <laughs> it was a little fish. You know, it's kind of a surprise, but the creek is as high as the ditch now, so they're able to swim from the creek into here and uh, brim, catfish, and so forth and so on. But I wish I would have caught that on camera. That was kind of cool to see. But uh, really excited that this worked also. I it's just a temporary solution because you can see where the, the dirt has washed over the rock now but as long as it's going to flow you can see where it cut in right there through here 
I don't know if I'll ever worry about a ditch on this side. I mean, it's just washing over here to the low part and then just being absorbed into the soil. So probably won't even need to worry about the ditch that I was talking about going over there. That might cause more problems than anything. So we probably just get some more permanent solution here for this, for the water to route over. And you can hear the fireworks going. It's uh, day after New Year. Well, Happy New Year also. Um, but yeah, I, and I leveled this off with the excavator. Don't know if I documented that a little bit over here. Kind of built some things up. But yeah, the mortise tenon, making the fence. That's going to be a future project for us. That'll be super cool. We can put one there. We can put one here. Um, and it's not going to keep you from falling in the ditch if you're driving, you know. But at least you'll bump it before you fall into the ditch. A little warning that, hey, I'm too close. But I thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for all your support. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.